Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we letter a new project every week. We have a lettering subscription box where you can get all the supplies, but if you don't have them, it's totally okay. You can come and join along and use whatever you have. So this week we're doing something a little bit different and we're going to be doing Mother's Day cards. Oh. That's Keenan in the back singing. <laughs> that was pretty good. Thank you. Good job. You. Um, so this week Mother's Day is coming up and I thought it'd be fun to do something different and create cards. And that's actually why I love lettering is because you can personalize it instead of buying a card from the store, make your own with us here. So that's what we're doing. The supplies is I'm going to be using two different colored pens. This one, this time, it's going to be a little bit different, but I'm going to be all, still using the Tombow Dual Brush Pens. This is 636, and this is Imperial Purple. A little fancy name. Um, I'm going to be using this side instead of what we're typically using is the brush side. So I'll explain that in a little bit. But that is the first color. The second color is... 533, three. and this is a really pretty color. This is peacock blue. So that's the second color. And then all you will need is um, cards. You, If you have the box, you will have blank ones, and then you will also have some com colored envelopes, but you can use whatever you had, like I said. If you don't have cards, all it is is it's a piece of paper, and you can use thicker paper and just fold it in half. So you can make shift and make your own. That, oh, and then if you do wanna mail your card stamps, and that is it. So in this particular lesson, we're gonna be going through four different steps. So I actually wanna show you something that's called creating a home. And it's a term, the little head nod. <laughs> it's a term that I actually made up. So if, you're, if you've watched other lettering videos, you might not hear this. But I will explain what that is. So it's called creating a home. and. I'll get to that. The second one is I'm going to show you what fulligraphy is. So like I mentioned before is we're going to be using this side of the brush, not brush pen, not this side. And so with that is it's just a different style of lettering. So if you just have markers, maybe you have the Crayola markers, use that. That's a, this is a perfect lesson to use that for. So I'm going to show you what fulligraphy is. The third one is we're going to make the actual cards. And then the fourth one is I'll show you how to letter an address, a, a simple trick way to letter an address on envelopes. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to show you is, I'm going to use this actually. So what I was talking about was the concept of creating a home. So it's perfect and I wanted to tie this in because it's Mother's Day and whether it's your mom or maybe it's your dad or grandma or someone from church, whoever is, is your motherly figure in your life, they kind of create a nest, they create a home for you and you feel comforted. And so when we think about that in terms of lettering, what I'm referring to is this guy. So actually I'm going to show you first what it might look like if you were to draw out the word. I'm going to cover that for a second. So what I'm talking about is this guy is what we're looking at, the end of the M. So in particular I'm going to be referring right now to capital letters. So if you're doing capital letters often you feel like in cursive is you have to connect them all and I actually want to show you that you can break the rules. You don't have to follow that exactly. So Instead, what if we create a little home and we curve it and we create this loop and then your O sits very nicely right there. What do you think, Keenan? Uh, it looks snugly. It looks <laughs> snuggly. I just, I love that. So it creates like this little nest. And so it's a simple, simple change that you can make that really helps um, just kind of create, like I said, a little nest for your letters. So that's another one. And then I wanted to show you the other example is, especially when you were to write out love, also the words I chose is because we're going to be using that. So that's why I'm choosing these words to do. Um, so love is another one that you might want to connect. And what's happening, especially with the L, is that it's an awkward connection right here because you're going um, horizontal. And so it's hard to know where to start the next letter. So what you can do is instead, 
What if you do the same concept and you bring it a little bit lower and then you can either choose maybe your O it starts there or you can go right there. How funny, both times it's an O. It works out perfectly. So it creates again this little home and little nest for the O to sit under. How convenient. <laughs> um, and then I also wanted to show you that this doesn't just pertain to capital letters. You can also do this with lowercase letters. And so in particular, an example is if you were to write, if you don't want to write a Mother's Day card, maybe you write a thank you card, especially if you're watching this and it's past Mother's Day, um, is you can write, if you were to write thank you, just writing this quickly. So if I were to write it and connect it, that's how I might write the U, but what if I see that I can break this apart and I also see this space right here that's the perfect, perfect nesting spot. So if you were to let go and go like that, again, and it's funny, again, it's a U, it creates a little home like that. And another thing that you can do is if you want, when you're looking at this, if you want to extend this further the next time, what if I create a home for both of them. And it sits like that. Looks like a little smiley face. So good. Yeah, so that's a fun, just, I just wanted to give that tip for you because I know a lot of people ask, well, how can I make my lettering different? And there's these little things that if you are kind of more mindful about what your lettering is instead of just going on autopilot, that's how you can create a different look. So that's the one thing I wanted to show you. So that's step one. Step two is going over photography. So what's happening is, I need another piece of paper, okay. If you were to look at this practice sheet, which I forgot to mention, if you do not have our subscription box, you can also get both of these. I created a, um, a practice one for your letters and one for the envelope, which we'll go over later. Both of this is on our website, letsmakeart.com, and you can download them for free if you don't have our box. I wanna be able to help everyone successfully complete this. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, if you click show more, see more, something like that. If you click <laughs> below the description, it will pop down and it'll show you all the information. I promise it's there. So what's on this one, what I wanted to show is if you look, so I actually wrote this out with the brush pen, which is this side of the brush, which is what we typically, if you're watching other past videos, is what we're using. So you can tell when you're looking at this is that there's a thin part and there's a thick part of the lettering. So if I were to do this, actually I'll just show you. If I were to use my brush pen, I would be going thin on the up and thick on the down, thin on the up, thick on the down. So I am using the tip of this brush pen and then I'm using the belly because I'm pushing harder to create that thick downstroke. So what's happening is that when you're doing that, it's creating that variance in stroke. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, we also created a beginner lettering series. There are just six really short videos that might be a good intro if you want to learn brush lettering. They'll have, I created handouts that look like this. So it'll show you the thin on, thin on the up, thick on the down. But for this one, like I said, is we're learning philography, which is essentially fake calligraphy. I don't really like the word fake but that's what it is, is we're, Im it should be called imitating. 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 We're Which I think is a... Uh, is the same thing. No, it's a, what's, what is the phrase? Imitation is the something form of flattery? Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know what that phrase, but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> that is, okay. <laughs> it's a flattering thing. So we're imitating, we're gonna create um, what brush lettering is actually doing. So. If you were to use, like I said, I'm going to be using the other side of my brush pen. If I were to do that, the step one for philography is you're going to write it with a regular pen and write it how you would normally do it. Without, I'm not thinking about thin on the up, thick on the down. I'm just going to write it out. So that's step one. Step two is that we're going to create this thick lines that's what that that is what was created when I did it with a brush pen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to think, okay, if you don't have this guide, but because I have this guide, I know what's thick, is when my hand's moving up, it's a thin line, so I'm gonna leave it. And when my hand's moving down, it's a thick line, so I need to add a thicker stroke. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to draw another line like that and connect it so it makes it thicker. 
So you can choose to draw it on the right side or the left side of the your first line. That doesn't really matter. Um, it's more just adding, add a little bit of space to it. So maybe I'm gonna draw it on the inside just to so, show you. So you can decide. So what I'm doing is I know, so thin on the up, thick on the down. So I'm gonna make this thicker. Thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up, thick on the down, thick on the down. So you can draw that and then I'm just connecting it so that it looks like a cohesive curve into it. So that's step two is adding the another line to make it thicker. And then step three of photography is you are just going to color this in. So you created your own guideline. Wow. Magic, right? That is so cool. And you can also decide when you're doing this is how thick you want your thick downstrokes to be. So you can make them a lot thicker or not. So you can color those in. So there we go. So it looks very similar to this. And I just did it with a regular pen. So this is a good thing, if, especially if you're trying to gain momentum um, with learning, is that's a good way to practice. So I want to do it one more time to show you one other thing. So I'm going to do it with the love. Also, if you have this practice sheet and you're looking at it, you'll notice I showed the first one is I showed it where on my example here, where if you want to connect them or if you want to create a home. So I also want to preface before I go any further, neither of this is right or wrong. These are just different tools and different ways to to make your lettering a little bit different that I wanna to give to you rather than you feeling like it has to be one way. So I don't want you to sit here and feel like, well, I already did that, so maybe that's wrong and I need to throw that away. It's not. I'm just showing you a different way to do it. So I'm gonna do love and I'm gonna do the photography. but what I wanted to show you on this one is a few things. So when you are doing this, especially on your curved shapes, instead of, Actually, I'm gonna show you with just a perfect circle. Instead of what you might think is, okay, I'm gonna go thick on the down here. So I'm gonna draw a straight line. This is not technically correct. What I want you to try and focus more on is instead of making a straight line, if I were to do this with my brush pen, is it creates this more crescent moon type and it, cur it goes from thin to thick to thin instead of just a straight line. So we want to mimic that and what we're going to do is we're going to also create a crescent moon. So it's a little bit thicker right here. So when I color it in, it matches that a little bit more. Granted, those are two different size ovals, which doesn't matter. But what I want to show you is it's this is correct rather than this. Because um, again, it kind of curves into it. So that's something to think about as you're creating this photography look. The other thing I wanted to mention, because I know this is a common connection that trips people up, is just the OV connection, is when you're doing this, often I see people going straight like that. And that's not wrong, but what you a tip I can give you is what if you create this little loop? So I create a loop that goes down and then goes up. And then the cool thing is what, what did we say, Keenan? It's like a helping hand. Helping hand. It's a helping hand. Instead of just like jotting out like this guy and just being like, come, <laughs> come to me. Be my friend. Be my friend. This one is a little bit more inviting. And the cool thing about lettering that I want to hopefully teach you all is to see that the reason why also this is more than just your handwriting is that when I'm looking at this, this, I'm gonna do it in a different color. This shape, mimics this shape rather than this one's a straight line and this one's a curve. So that's just a really minor thing to look at is how can I create this a little bit more cohesive because that's what will train the eye to see it a little bit differently than just kind of this choppiness. So those are some tips I wanted to give you. Now, where'd all my caps go? Um, you can go through this exercise. It's just a good one. All of these are here for you to practice with. And then we're going to do step three, which is making your actual cards. So I have my blank card. So like I said, I'm going to move this guy. Ooh. 
So if you don't have a card, what you can do is just use a thicker cardstock paper, cut that, and then fold it in half. And I also wanna preface, if you have our box, you will have, there's two purple, two pink, and two white envelopes, um, and then six cards. The cards, if you feel it, I love. Do you wanna feel it, Keenan? Yeah. It's, so what it is, is I, it has a little bit more of a texture, and how's it feel? Oh yeah, that's nice. Right? I know, it feels, it does, it, it's, a, it's a funny feeling. So what it is, is it's called, if you have the box, it's called Pearl Letra. Pearl's actually the color, so it's not a bright white. Um, it's called Letra. And I wanted to give you all, if you have the box, a little bit of a fancier paper. Um, I was gonna say, you're gonna say a word that I know you're gonna. <laughs> you mean bougie. No, okay. Anyways, <laughs> um, it's because it's, it's, it just has a nicer feel and I really like it because if you're writing on a card, why not just give a little bit of a, a little fancier paper? It's okay if you have regular paper, it's not that, it's not wrong. Um, I just, I used to work in the wedding industry and I designed wedding invites. And so I was educated on all these different papers. I had no idea. I didn't know what pound, I didn't know anything. So now I'm just passing that on to you. <laughs> the other thing We call is, those pro tips. Yeah, it's a pro tip, yeah. a little insider. Pearl Letra is my favorite paper. Anyways, if you were doing this and you might be thinking, Nicole, this is textured paper. You told us not to use that. And I did, and I, I did tell you it's not good to use it on watercolor paper. It is totally okay though. And as you might've seen, especially in our Q and A video, is if your markers, as you're using them, if they start to lose, um, if they start to fray a little bit, you can still completely use that. So it's okay if you use a little bit of textured paper. It's also one of the reasons why I'm showing you what photography is on this, so you can do that. The other thing, you can use watercolor. Um, you can use watercolors on this paper, so I thought it was a good way. Anyways, that's enough spiel on that. Multi-purpose. Um, the other thing, actually, is it's hard to tell space-wise. If you could see my hands, <laughs> they're a little bit bigger. The size of this, if you're just wondering, this is an A2 card. Um, a, there's an A7 size, which is bigger, and then there's an A6, and this is A2. I love this size because it's a perfect card size. It's not too big. It's kind of like a, hey, I'm thinking of you, not in your face. Um, Abrasive. Which is actually totally fine. I love big cards. What am I talking about? Yeah. <laughs> but I just wanted to tell you there was a reason why I picked this size. I thought it was a good Mother's Day size. Um, so that's what's in your box. For this one, I am not going to give you an outline. In the past projects, I usually give outlines to kind of help you. I want you to feel empowered to do this on your own because I know you can. Um, so what you can do is if you had practiced, where's all my stuff? Um, after you practice doing mothers, what you can do is you could have that as your guideline. And this is the one, there's a lot going on here. That's the one, the card we're gonna be creating. So if you're going through these steps, what I suggest you to do is it's helpful if you think about the center of this and I'm going to write out mothers. So if you want, if you feel more comfortable, please go ahead and I can do it to show you is you can draw it. Oh, I want to create my home is you can do this in pencil. And the reason why it's okay on this one is that my card or my, my card, my brush, um, or my pen is darker, so I won't be able to see my lines. So that's pretty centered. Um, and so I'm just gonna go over and create that little home. So I'm just going over it with this thin pen. So there's that. What you can do is then, when I'm looking at this, is now I can see, okay, I have this space on top and I have this space on the bottom. I'm gonna write out happy above it. And I notice that when I'm looking at this, is I have this Y, so it kind of goes down. So here's a few things that go through my brain. If that bothers you, what you can, an option is you can just write happy. Can you see that, Keenan, in yeah. pencil? Yeah, okay, so you can write and do it in block font. That's totally cool, you can do that. Or I just wanna show you is if you wanna do it in cursive, what I might do is I see the space right here, so I might try and get my Y to 
fit right there. So it fits really nicely. And I'm gonna dress a little bit bigger. Okay, so then that sits right there. And then I have all this space, so I'm gonna write day, and I'm just going to, maybe I curve it like that. So that's also another way thinking about it's not necessarily creating a home, I'm just using the space and I'm using the end of my Y to kind of curl into it. Oh, this got really close. So draw it out in pencil first if you'd like, and then go back over it with your pen. Happy Mother's Day, okay. So then that's step one. Step two is, like I said with photography, is I'm gonna make my downstrokes thicker. So I am going to draw them. And actually I wanna show you. So I'm gonna decide on happy and day. I'm gonna make them a little bit thinner. I'll show you two ways to do that. So, oops, same thing. This is thin on the up thick on the down. So those are a little bit thicker. Uh, you could also, if you don't want to create kind of a, um, the negative space in between, what you can do is you can just draw the line, oops, a couple times and you can color it in as you're going. So I'm just going to make this a little bit thicker, then thick on the down, then on the up, thick on the down. So I'm just kind of creating more lines on this one and guiding it into that. So those are two different ways, or this first way that I showed where I just color it in. And then what I wanted to show is you can dictate, the cool thing about this is that with photography is you can dictate how thick your thick strokes are. So if I want mothers to stand out, maybe I make it a lot thicker. Oh, actually, another thing I can show you. So, so many things I want to show. That is an option. So you can make mothers a lot thicker. And if you want, when you take a step back and you look at that, if you feel like your thins, in comparison, your thins are too thin, comparatively, what you can also do is if you just want to make the whole word thicker in general, is you can go over your thin lines and just kind of, I was gonna say beef them up. <laughs> I don't know if that sounds weird. Put them through a regimen and beef them up. <laughs> beef them up a little bit and make them just a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna do that again. They're healthy letters, it's fine. Right? Thank you, Keaton. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so another tip is when you're going through this, I can tell that this is, I don't want you to be so focused on your lettering. The reason why I'm gonna show you this is because if there's people who really wanna know, I wanna give you everything in my brain, all the tools to help you. Don't get stuck on this though if you're like, that is too intimidating. But when I'm looking at this is I can tell that the spacing between here is a little bit smaller and the spacing between here is a little bigger. So when I decide where I wanna make my thick line is do I add it on the left or do I add it on the right is because I have more space on here, I'm gonna choose to add it on this side because it fills that space. So you can see that it made this negative space between the letters a little bit smaller. So that's just a little, another little pro tip is you can decide like that. This one is, I'm gonna do it on this side. So there's not a right or wrong, it's kind of feeling it out. Thick on the down, thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up. So again, I'm leaving my thin on the ups, thin thick on the down. So you can see my M is a lot thicker, or um, the thins are thicker than this than I left, so maybe I'm gonna go back over and just make these a little bit thicker. Like that. 
Nicole. Yes. Is this the graphic designer side of you seeing these things or the experience in hand lettering or a combo of both? Mm, that's a good question. Oh, yeah, because I gave a Keenan a graphic design lesson. That's fine. I'm basically a graphic designer. <laughs> you are. Um, this is something that that's why I really like teaching lettering because I do come from a graphic design background, but I also got into the wedding world, like I said, and did lettering. So it's kind of a combination. I don't want either one, either one camp of the party to feel like they need to be one or the other. So it's helpful. That's why I'm able to teach, I think, because I can see both sides. Anyways, that was a great question. Um, Last step is, or we did all of that. If you want to add a little bit of fun, what I did on this one is that you can see I added a little bit of shadow to these guys. And actually, I think I just want to add a shadow to mothers now that I'm looking at this. Um, so what's happening is I'm just going to draw on the left side. I went over this in one of the tutorials already. Um, but what's happening is when you're adding a shadow, you can choose, do I do it on the left side or the right side? So what you're creating is it's like as if a light was shining and what would be, what shadow would be showing on the other side. So I'm choosing my light sources on this side. So it's hitting here. So the shadow is going to be created on the left. So I'm going to create and add a line everywhere on the left side. Maybe a small one on that side. So I like to add it with a little bit of space in between. You can also, I'll show you another way. You can also just do it right next to it. Can you zoom in on that, Keenan, a little bit? Yeah. So you can see these colors blend. So it's actually creating like a different purple. But if you can see, I'm adding the line directly to it. Whereas on this one, I added and I had a little bit of space between. So either way works. Maybe I'll, to match it, I'll do it like this. So I'm just adding it on the left side of every part. Because again, my light source is up here. So like that. And I realize I can see some of my pencil lines. And not that this needs to dry, but I wouldn't do it right away and I wouldn't um, erase if you do have pencil lines right away. I'd give it, I don't know how long I'd give it. I'm gonna try and do it just to show you. But when you're erasing, really lightly erase. And actually, I really like this eraser. Because um, I can use part of this side. Um, is really lightly and don't erase the whole thing. Just erase the part that you can see the pencil lines. And also when I'm moving the um, eraser, what do you call that? Eraser shreds? Shavings. Shavings, wow, thank you. You're welcome. Um, is I'm just lightly, I'm not going like this really hard. Okay, fun. So that's that. The other thing is that they, you can add a pattern to this. So I decided on this one just to add lines. You can, maybe you draw dots around it, make it, or you can draw, maybe you go to the watercolor um, lessons that Sarah does and you add some flowers or something around it. So that's just a fun way to add it. Then of course you add your message on the inside and then you mail it off. Um, but I also wanted to show you, actually, I'll show it really quickly. So the second type of card that you could make if you want is, um, because we also practice the word love, I thought it'd be cool if you didn't want to make such a perfect card like this, is what if you just wrote the word love multiple times and you did it in different sizings? So when you're doing this is you don't need, the reason why I don't have an outline again is this one, you can just draw it maybe, I draw it that way and then I turn my card a little bit and maybe I draw it going this way. And then another thing is if you want to play with is you can play with, we were talking about in, it's the one of the one of a kind video, I talk about lettering as shapes. So I'm going to draw love really circular. So what I'm doing is I'm just making my O, for example, really circular. So it fits like that. Or if you want to do the opposite and make them skinny ovals, I'm going to draw love and make it like that. And maybe it fits in that place. 
like that. So you can keep going and adding in, kind of puzzling it through like that. Um, for time purposes, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. But what I did wanna show you is a few other tips and fun ways that you can make this a little bit different. So you all saw that when I added the thick down stroke, let's see the thick down stroke like that. You could, another style that you can do is you can leave it like that and maybe you add in some lines around or in it and not fill it in. That looks so cool. Thanks, Keenan. Gosh, that's neat. So that's another way you can mix it up or maybe you do decide to do it in the other color. You can fill that in or so these are other fun little ways that you can mix it up or maybe you can do it again but you you can add the lines in a different way I've also seen this kind of do a jagged edge not jagged edge. I don't know what you want to sure call it. Sure, there's a name. Diagonal. For it. We'll go with diagonal. <laughs> like that. That's another fun way. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ways I can give you guys. Oh, if you want, you can also just draw dots. So the cool thing is that with photography is all it is, like I said, is it's it's creating that thin on the up and that thick on the down um, concept that we've been learning. So you can also you can mix it up. Maybe you just add dots to the thick on the down part. So thick on the down, thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up, thin on the up, thick on the down. So you just draw dots like that. Um, so those are some other fun little ways that you can do that to just kind of mix it up, have fun. Um, and then of course add your Add your note on the inside. Okay, that is step three. Step four now is the envelopes. So after you have fun designing your own cards, we are going to be this, addressing your envelopes. So when you're looking at this, what I did was this example is I did it all in cursive or script lettering, and then this one I mixed it up. And I did kindly deliver to in the lettering and the script and then the rest of the address in a block font. So I wanna show you both options. A common thing is um, when you're doing your addresses, you might wanna make it centered and make it really perfect. And a little trick is actually, what if you left justify everything? So created this handout that can help you to start practicing is you can see I drew a line that it's left justified and then all my lines are um, attached to that. So that's what left justified means. It means everything shifted to one side. You could do it right justified if you wanted to. Um, so what's happening is that if you were to do this, I'm going to write, I'm just using our let's make our address. Let's make, so this would be the name of who you're sending it to. Also, this is for US. If you're in another country, which I know so many, it's so cool, so many of you are from other countries, I would Google it. <laughs> 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 I, I always, whenever I address, because um, I do wedding invites for, I get um, asked to do that, or uh, addressing envelopes, and I always have to Google it, because I know there's so many different um, little things, like for the countries, you have to add that. For USA, you don't have to add USA, but I would just Google it. I don't know every single country in the world, I'm sorry. Um, but you can still apply this concept to your own country, no matter if you have three lines or if you have four lines. Um, so what you can do is I am, like I did on this one, is I left justified everything. I'm gonna draw this fast just to show you. So this is just my practice. So everything is less justified. So you can see that these lines are a little bit different, but everything's cohesive here. So that way it feels, instead of you just wrote it really fast, this is a little trick to make it look like you knew what you're doing. Um, if you want, what you can do is if, oh, I don't have my light box handy. Um, 
If you have a light enough envelope color, what you can do is you can do what we've been doing where you can make this a little bit darker and you can put this on top and you can trace over it. Um, I don't want you to feel so perfect on this because this is just an envelope. People are gonna feel so excited to receive this in the mail that I don't want you to get tripped up on making this perfect. So maybe this isn't a time to use your light box, um, but I understand if you want to do that. Um, so that's an example. Another thing that you can do is if, I'm gonna do it on, I'll do it on a lighter color. No, I like this one. Um, if you want, another thing is if you want to just help yourself and do one guideline, what you can do is if you want to use a ruler and draw your line like that, if you don't have a ruler, you can just use a side of a piece of paper um, or you can freehand it. Is So that is my left justified one. If you want to then go for it, what's happening is make sure that you leave enough room for your stamp. So sometimes stamps are different sizes. So if you have a um, horizontal stamp, just make sure that you leave enough room for that. So also another tip is I learned, I stamp things after. Um, when I did wedding invites, the first time I did it, we stamped it first and I made a few mistakes and I learned that I wasted 49 cents or whatever it is. And it's okay, but just another tip that I've learned from doing this so often, buy more envelopes than you need instead of more stamps because they're a little bit cheaper. Do your address first and then stamp it. Learn that the hard way. Um, so where'd my example go? I gave you all a guideline that you can practice and it says kindly deliver to. So this is also another, it's not cheating. We're working harder. What is the saying that we're doing? Work hard, not work smarter. Work hard, not wow. smart. No, work, <laughs> work smarter, not harder. Oh gosh. Work smarter, not harder. And what I mean by that is help yourself. And what if you do, if you're practicing the script lettering, what if you get really good at writing kindly deliver to? And you can practice that. And then you do the rest of the address in a block font. So it'll kind of look like this. So if you're addressing a whole bunch of envelopes at once, just get good at writing kindly deliver to. And then you can do the rest in your own font. But what I want to show you is how to do that. So if you have, I have my left justified line and I'm going to write everything. I'm going to think about my spacing's about right there. Kindly. Kindly deliver to. So I'm going to write that out. And maybe if you want, you can add your photography in whatever style you like. You make this a little bit thicker. And then if you want, you can also draw yourself. So I remember the first time I had to do addresses and of course they were black. So I couldn't even help myself by using a guideline. Um, and so I used to be a perfectionist, especially when I was getting paid to do this. So for any perfectionist out there, that's why I'm talking to you because I know how it's like, you want everything to be perfect on a straight line. Um, I understand. If you really want, I remember that first time I sat there and there was like a hundred envelopes and I drew myself guidelines on every single one. I don't recommend that at all, but if you want to do that, you can. So you can draw yourself guidelines if you want. And look at that. I was not even straight and I am not mad about it. I don't really care because like I said, and I can't even draw straight with a, with <laughs> a ruler. So. Just ignore that. But if you want, you can draw your own straight, perfect lines. But to me, that's not what the whole meaning of this all is. Um, it's that you're making a card for someone and sharing and spreading the love. So let's make art. You can draw this in your block font um, and keep going with that. A couple, one other tip that I've learned is make sure you give yourself room at the bottom of your envelope. Don't go too far down um, because the post office needs that whatever they do with their machine is they need a little bit of room. So another pro tip. That was a lot in one lesson. Um, you can see it was all... great. It wasn't that much. Whew, okay. I wanted to show you guys a lot of things. So that is what we're doing. All of that. You have the outlines, like I said, 
Um, I think, is there anything else I had to say? Keenan. I don't know. know. (laughs) Um, I think that's it. I hope you had fun. Again, like I kept saying, the whole thing of this is to remember that you are sending a card. And that is going to mean so, so much. We have Let's Make Art Matter, which is a postcard that we do every month. So that's another thing that you can come join us at the end of every month. Um, But the whole thing is why I love this, is you're just sending a card. You're thinking about someone, you're taking the time out to think about someone. And that is such a special thing that I want you to remember. And just a little piece of paper, an envelope, and a stamp, and you're gonna make someone's day. Instead of receiving a bill, who doesn't like to receive a bill? Receive a handmade card from you. And then also, that's what I need to say. We have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Lettering, so it's different than the watercolor group. You can join both, um, but Let's Make Art Lettering. Come and show what you make. Maybe don't show the address, just show the card that you make. Um, and let's spread joy together and just make this world a little bit brighter, one card at a time. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>